In this tutorial, we're going to look at some of the tools you need to install on your machine to set up your development environment and start writing Angular applications, which explore services in this course. There are essentially three things that I want you to install. You might have some of these already installed, but I'm just going to run through them. The first installation is Node.js. Node.js has kind of become like the standard thing that you have to install before you do web development these days. A lot of the web development utilities and tools are written using Node. So that's one thing that we would need in this course as well. Uh, go to nodejs.org website and choose the download. You can choose the latest download and uh, install it on your machine. Node.js is essentially a JavaScript runtime that lets us build JavaScript applications on your machines on, on the server. In this case, we are not going to be building applications using Node. We will use some of the tools that help us write Angular application. Just so happens that those tools are written using Node, so you need the Node runtime in order to execute those tools. All right, so that's the first thing you need to install, which is Node.js. Uh, the second thing you need to install is HTTP server. HTTP server is built using Node, which is why you install Node.js first. Now, what is HTTP server? HTTP server is a command line HTTP server utility, true to its name. What it does is it serves up static files on a particular directory and makes it available over HTTP. Now, why do we need this? Well, think about how you would test your Angular applications after you've built them, that you've coded some Angular application, you have your HTML files, how do you test them? Well, you can of course open those files in Windows Explorer or Finder and double click on them and it's gonna open the HTML in a browser. But if you do something like that, you will notice that the URL on the address bar is gonna read something like file colon double slash. It's basically opening that in the file protocol. The problem with opening HTML files in a file protocol is it's not reflective of how things work when you actually deploy the HTML on a server. Let's say you're done with your Angular application and you deploy it on a server, right? So the way to access your app from browsers would typically be your HTTP colon double slash and the URL to your file. That works in the HTTP mode, which is different from the file mode that we, we, we're gonna end up with when you open the file from your Windows Explorer or Finder. So when you're building HTML web pages, you'd like to verify that they're working using the HTTP protocol rather than the file protocol. So HTTP server lets you do that. You go to your directory where you have your HTML files and then run this command HTTP server and it is going to start a simple HTTP server and make your file available using the HTTP URL. It's a temporary URL that's running on localhost. It's gonna not work anymore when you kill this process, but as far as development is concerned, hey, it works just fine. So this is the second thing you would need to install. The third thing you would need to install is something called JSON server. Again, note the URL over here. JSON server lets you create a simple REST API, a fake REST API, so to speak, which is backed by JSON files. What this lets you do is start up a simple REST API with very, very little effort, less than 30 seconds, as this page seems to promise. Why do we need REST APIs? Well, we're going to be building Angular applications which interact with the REST API endpoint, make GET requests and make POST requests and all that stuff. And we don't want to build an actual REST API in this course because the scope of this course is Angular. It's not Node or Java or whatever else. So having a fake REST API does work. As far as your Angular learning is concerned, it really doesn't matter whether your REST API is fake or real. You just need a REST API endpoint. And this gives you that. So if you're not very sure about what these things do, don't worry about it, we're actually gonna be using this and it's all gonna make sense then. For now, all you need to do is install these three tools. First, go to nodejs.org, click on this thing, download and install. It's probably gonna be an installation package. The installation process is gonna be different between Windows, Mac and Linux and all that. So make sure you run the installation for your operating system. Once you've done that, open the command prompt and install these two tools. This is how you install it. So open your command prompt and first make sure that node and npm is installed. So you do that by typing node-v. This is gonna give you the version number of node that's installed. My version is 5.1. Uh, the web page actually had a six version of node. So if you've downloaded that, it sh your thing should read six point something. And then 
Now that you're ready with Node, you need to install two Node applications, HTTP server and JSON server. The way to install a Node application is by using a tool called npm. So you say npm install and the name of the application, HTTP dash server. And then you have to specify a dash G switch, which tells Node to install this package globally so that you can use this no matter which location you are in the command prompt. So you type this and Node is gonna fetch that package and install it on your machine. Similarly, you need to install JSON server. So it's basically the same command, but the name of the package will change. So it's npm install JSON server dash G. I hit enter and Node is gonna fetch that package also and install it globally so that you can use it anywhere in the command prompt. Okay, so we have JSON server installed as well. Now let's verify that these two programs have worked. So I type in HTTP dash server and you should get something that looks like this. Right, so I press Control C to end it. And then I type JSON server and you should probably get some message as well. So with this, we know that these two programs have been successfully installed. And with this, we are pretty much done with the development environment setup. The two other things that I we need that you probably already have installed are a browser and a text editor. My recommendation for a browser is Google Chrome, and my recommendation for a text editor is Visual Studio Code, although some other text editors like Atom, Brackets, Sublime Text, all those should do. Any text editor where you can open like a directory and see all the contents of the directory in a tree view, double click on a file and edit it, that's perfect, that's all we need, right? So I hope you have all these things installed, so see you in the next tutorial where we're gonna start building our address book application.